Welcome to Lecture 9 of Biology 115, entitled Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process that we've all heard of before, and we've all learned it to some extent. But now what we're going to do is not only understand this process, but what I hope to do is show you the importance of understanding this process. This is a process that is absolutely key to our own lives. It's a process that often gets overlooked as something that plants do and that we shouldn't care about. But it's absolutely not like that, and it's my job to not only teach you this process and this uh, overall reaction set, but what we're going to definitely be looking at is the importance of it and how it relates to us, why it's important to us as human beings. And to begin, we're going to just start off our first flowchart by just introducing the concept, um, and we'll entitle this first flowchart Photosynthesis Intro. Just a basic overview of what photosynthesis is and also the idea of light. That's what we'll be covering in this first flowchart. So, first of all, let's do a basic definition of photosynthesis. I always like to start off some of these processes and basic flowcharts with a basic definition so that we have an idea of what we're talking about and we can refer back to this definition henceforth. So, what is photosynthesis? We've covered this briefly before in our metabolism video. It was an example of a metabolic process. Um, photosynthesis is defined as the conversion of light energy and big E stands for energy, into chemical, and we can be a little bit more specific, I'll put this in parentheses, uh, more specifically bond, chemical bond energy. Conversion of light energy into chemical bond energy. And when we refer to light energy, we're of course, of course referring to good old sunlight. Everybody understands that photosynthesis is a process that relies on sunlight. And what we do is we take this sunlight and its energy specifically and we convert it eventually into simple sugars. This is the idea of plants making their own food. And what we mean by this is that they make their own food using light. And a good word to summarize that is that plants and photosynthesis itself occurs in photoautotrophs. Trophs just means energy or the obtainment of energy. Auto means self, and photo means light. So using light to self-create your own energy. And we consider anybody who's a photoautotroph also um, part of the producers. They produce their own chemical energy utilizing the light energy provided by sunlight. So that's the general scope of what we're going to be looking at. More specifically now, I want to talk about light. Before you get into the actual process of photosynthesis, you have to break down this part of the word, photo which is also just the Greek way of saying light. Light itself is considered a, a part of the idea of electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy. And what we mean by this is that it is a part of um, the electromagnetic EM spectrum. This is something you've probably seen in your physics classes from before, the EMS, the electromagnetic spectrum. This is just considered um, the entire range of radiation. We'll write that down. Entire range of radiation. What I basically mean by this is that if you, you, we've probably all seen an electromagnetic spectrum before, it's like the radio waves and the magnetic waves and the microwaves and the x-rays. All those things are a part of this EMS. Visible light is a small part of it as well and that's what we're going to be talking about in terms of photosynthesis. When we talk about the electromagnetic energy, we also have to refer to waves often and also of these waves we have to describe their wavelengths. And we'll get into that in just a second. But just understand that wavelengths, waves are part or consist, uh, are the parts that can consist and make up the electromagnetic spectrum. And the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we're specifically going to be focusing on is the visible light part. Because that's the part that plants utilize. So, in addition to this, um, we have to understand one more term. Uh, that term is a photon. If you remember, we considered uh, other types of, let's say, ons, like electron and proton, neutron. Now we have a photon, and this is just exactly how it sounds. It's a small particle of light energy this time. So I'll write that down, small particle of light energy. And of course, this is going to originate from where? Sunlight. Sunlight, the rays of the sun, have photons, small particles of light energy that plants are going to utilize. And what happens is, um, in terms of waves, let's say, energy 
is actually um, inversely proportional inversely proportional to wavelength. What we mean by this is that if you have a short wavelength, you have a high amount of energy. If you have a uh, long wavelength, you have a low amount of energy. That's just the established relationship between a photon and its associated energy. So if you have a photon that has a short wavelength, you imagine it to have a high energy. If you have a photon that has a longer wavelength, you imagine it to have a shorter energy. We don't need to go into the specifics of why that is. Just understand that that relationship is considered inversely proportional. In addition to this, photons make up what I've already mentioned uh, briefly, visible light. Visible light is the light that we obviously see, uh, but more specifically, um, visible light is the light that biological processes use. So we'll write that down. Biological processes use visible light because that is the light um, we can say, or we can actually even ask ourselves why I like to do this sometimes. Instead of just saying, you know, visible light is the biological processes way of using light energy. Why is it visible light? What's the purpose of visible light and not, you know, let's say ma uh, magnetic waves? Why don't we use x-rays? Why don't we use uh, microwaves? Why do we use the wavelength that gives us visible light? And this is because um, we consider basically visible light the perfect amount of energy. And it simply means uh, not too much energy. If it's too much energy, then it's too hard to harness and control. And not too little energy that doesn't provide us anything in the long run. So we consider a photon uh, a visible light, a particle of visible light that uh, sort of allows biological processes to occur because it possesses just the right amount of energy. And that's really, really amazing to think that the sunlight that hits the Earth possesses just the right amount of energy for all of these biological processes to occur because, once again, plants are producers. They are photoautotrophs. They are basically the start of the food chain. So without them, without this sort of why reasoning being possible, we expect nothing, absolutely nothing in terms of um, energetic levels and levels of trophy, let's say, of trophic uh, energetic consumption. But that's besides the point. Moving forward, and we're going to uh, finish off with just this last point right here, um, we're going to look at uh, a couple of different scenarios, two scenarios specifically, um, and we'll start off the scenario by starting with this sentence. When a molecule absorbs photon, a couple of things can happen. We'll do dot, dot, dot to create some suspense. So when molecule absorbs photon, we know that this will happen. We know that the electron, an electron becomes energized. Electron becomes energized. What I mean by this is that if the electron was originally in a lower orbital, Remember how we said electrons are found in shells, and shells are also known as electron orbitals? If that electron was in an, a lower orbital, and it became energized by absorbing a photon or a particle of light energy, what do you think it's going to do? If it absorbs energy, it's going to go from a lower orbital to a higher orbital, of course. And then if it's a, at a lower orbital, that also means that it's at a lower energy level. And if it's at a lower energy level, it's going to absorb a photon to become energized and get to a higher energy level. This is the idea of what happens when a molecule absorbs a photon. But the problem is we cannot stay at this higher level. Can't stay here, let's say. Can't stay here. It's unsafe, let's say. Let's imagine that if this electron goes from this lower to higher orbital and goes from a lower energy state, um, to a higher energy state, it's just very wild and it's like too much energy, let's say, in this situation of going from higher and lower to higher. We have to figure out a way to harness this energy and calm it down a little bit. It's just a little too crazy right now. So what do we do? We have an option. The electron itself has an option. We can say that the electron will either, and we'll create some suspense of course, dot, 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 oh, can you? Dot, dot, dot. This just says electron will either, um, and we can do two things. Return to, what do you think? If we went from lower to higher, what is it going to return to? It's lower state, right? And that's actually called um, ground state. So we'll say return to ground state. That's the idea of going back to where you started from, okay? 
it returns to ground state, that's a possibility, or, or that electron can also um, leave the atom entirely. So we'll say the energized electron leaves atom. So it just bounces. Uh, before it says, all right, I'm crazy, I'm full of oil, so all this energy, I'm just going to go back to normal and just relax. Like, too crazy. And then in this situation, that electron, this is E minus, sorry, that electron in this situation gets so highly energized and says, you know what, I can't stay here, i got to go somewhere else, I'm just going to leave. That's the two sort of sides of the coin that we're looking at. One of these belongs to photosynthesis and one of them does not. What happens in this situation of returning to ground state is that the electron itself um, either gives off heat, so we'll say gives off heat once it returns to the ground state, or gives off light. Both of these are not photosynthetic uh, end results. These are just things that happen based off of the physics of it, based off of the chemistry behind it, but these both do not result in any sort of photosynthetic process. Then, of course, if the energized electron from this absorption of uh, photon energy leaves the atom, it has to go somewhere. And if it goes somewhere, it will go to and it will be accepted. Get very familiar with this term of accepted. That's the correct terminology by an electron acceptor. Once it gets accepted by an electron acceptor, somebody who says, you know what, you're full of all this energy because you absorb that photon, I'm going to happily take you and I'm going to accept you because I'm an electron acceptor. That person, whoever's doing that, this is the start of, this is what photosynthesis is all about. This is the photosynthesis that we're going to be talking about today. This is where we talk about photosynthesis. This is what you should star and understand that photosynthesis is all about. Taking a high energy electron and passing it on to an electron acceptor because of that absorption of photon that started it all. And this is what photosynthesis is all about. We'll get into the great, great, beautiful details as we continue in this series.